Now, I know I'm a little late on this, but I was pretty sick throughout the week, so I just didn't have the energy to make a video. But let's talk about it now. Episode 5 of the Halo TV show. Possibly the best episode, maybe, of the season. Now, I know a lot of people are going to probably be pointing out, like, well, you probably liked it because of the action. And, well, yeah, the action in Episode 5 was pretty dang incredible. But also that build-up to the action and all the scenes before that were very important, very crucial, and very interesting to watch. We see Chief have his breakthrough moment to understand that he was actually stolen from the UNSC and replaced with a Flash clone and he goes to attack Halsey but Cortana kind of mentally shuts him down, literally. Miranda Keys was so close to capturing probably the best moment she possibly could have profession in her professional career and gets pulled away for unknown reasons to her. And then we see Captain Keys trying to juggle this all together between keeping Halsey happy, keeping her, keeping his daughter safe, keeping Chief happy, happy as well without giving him too much information to confirm what he thinks. Chief confronting Kai about removing her little pellet or pelt whatever the heck you want to call that thing and then boom the covenant come in and just completely ruin everything for the UNSC we finally got some action we've been waiting for this basically since the first episode the first episode had a great impression for all Halo fans I think most people liked it yeah some of the CGI moments were kind of questionable to say the least but for the most part it was a great episode and then episode two three and four were really kind of building up to episode five where all of it kind of comes together now some people called those episodes filler they certainly were not filler they definitely helped flesh out the characters flesh out the world develop the plot a bit more as well now i do understand people when they see or think of a halo tv show they think of the games and you're mainly just jumping in shooting things but this is a tv show and not a video game so you need to build up these characters plus having amazing action scenes that we had in episode five well i mean like those are quite budget breaking episodes some people say 10 million dollars an episode i bet 30 million of that was probably for this singular episode i mean the action again like i said it was absolutely phenomenal we got to see the warhog in action we got to see the spartan sprinting alongside the warhog which is lore accurate kind of stuff right there we got to see the jackals we got to see grunts getting in on it banshee swooping in fast and low and chief pulling off some unlimited lore accurate chief stuff grabs a banshee and just glides it right into a phantom to save kai it was such an amazing scene it was so over the top but like in the right way it was a bit much but a bit much of awesome though then that spirit came in and just dropped a single brute it really lets you know how badass this brute is he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with master chief just swings his big hammer and knocks him back grabs the artifact and zips right back up. Now there are some rumors going around that this is Atriox, like a young Atriox kind of situation, which would be kind of interesting and a really cool way to see if they can maybe have like in the season two, have Atriox be like the main villain or something like that. If they can find a way to stop the covenant within like what the next four episodes I think we have left. I mean, the gravity hammer he's using is like a four prong gravity hammer, which would make sense with Atriox. I don't know how that lines up with like traditional lore sense, but I would be totally down with it. Now I want to kind of touch back on my part when people were saying that like episodes two through four were filler they certainly were not filler think about this if we just jumped into like episode five is like episode two or three right like that'd be kind of insane all the characters that were in play you probably wouldn't really have much of an emotional investment with besides master chief right because they flesh out halsey they fleshed out miranda keys they fleshed out captain keys a bit as well not as much but definitely enough and especially kai who were all the characters that were in like actual danger this episode halsey keys the keyses um you know kai and master chief and also you know riz and vanek as well but not so much if we didn't have those character development moments all through episode pretty much the rest of episode one to end of episode four especially for episode four for kai we wouldn't really care that much especially if, like that one scene where master chief jumps off the warhog and kind of puts the mission at risk to save kai us as the viewers probably would be thinking why are you doing that master chief that's none that's not like you at all or from what we saw from the previous episodes of chief removing his remo emotional suppressant pill thing or whatever then kai removing her emotional suppressant thing kai basically having that breakthrough episode in episode four really really helped you kind of understand the character and kind of you know have a bit of a connection with her so then when you see chief do some drastic motions like he did in episode five to kind of risk the entire mission to save her you're kind of understanding chief's perspective then towards the end of episode five makika just dropped off right at the unsc to be a bit of a trojan horse to kind of figure out where the other piece of that artifact is this is where i think miranda keys's linguistic research is going to come into play here right 
because I'm sure the UNSC are going to poke McKee's brain, metaphorically, not literally, about the inner workings and understandings of the Covenant. Because the UNSC does have that distress call that McKee did from the previous UNSC ship, though it was distorted and in Sanghealy, so they thought it was an elite that was making those calls, but actually it was McKee. I bet you there's probably going to be some time where she lines up the audio and finds out her voice matches up exactly with the distress call, which might cause some red flags. That's just my prediction though. Now the reason why I said that episode 5 might be the best one yet because we haven't really seen any anything else from the trailers that we had about the Halo TV show. Most of the trailers that we saw for all the action stuff was in episode 1 and well this episode. We haven't really seen any kind of teasing stuff past this. So did this episode break the bank and well there might not be any more action scenes left? I doubt that. I'm sure we'll have something else really cool to finish off the season, but we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, and I completely forgot to talk about the whole Quan and Madrigal kind of plot point, which I think the internet as a whole, and myself and my wife included, we all just don't care about Madrigal because everyone that we gave so much of a crap about was killed off in the first episode. And so everything else has just been taken away from Quan. So like we haven't really learned as viewers why we need to save Madrigal rather than her just being her home but it seems like everyone else doesn't really want to fight for their home but except for her like i really don't care if madrigal gets saved I, this whole the whole plot point is just kind of uh, pointless to me if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here got a link to all my halo news and informational videos right there thank you so much for watching greatly appreciate it catch you on the next one peace out